Okay, ready to go. All right, y'all know. First of all, would you like to see me thread the machine? Is anybody interested in that? Okay. Thread the machine. Okay. Let's, let's talk about Thread the Machine. Just so you know, when you take your sassy girls home, there is a video on my website of me doing the same thing that I'm fixing to show you. And I am only an email away. I am Baby Lock Sashiko's spokesperson, and I answer every single letter anybody asks me about anything anyway, but especially about Sashiko. So if you get stuck on anything, you can write me, and I will help you. And if you're really bad off, I'll give you my phone number. <laughs> okay, remember what we do here? We are going to ring his doorbell, so we press and hold that needle up down button. And now when he turns on his porch light, right there, it is okay to open the door. Now I'm going to turn this machine around so you can see what I'm doing here, all right? Let's see if it will show. No, it really isn't. Uh, no, I don't think I can move the table. Sorry. All right. Y'all not going to be able to see it. Just listen to me. Okay. We'll take the bobbin out. You see that little bobbin case? You notice how he has that little fluffy tail on that side right there? See it? And then he has rabbit ears on the other side. See them? Two little rabbit ears? Okay. So... Now we put our bobbin in so that the thread is spooling off clockwise, like that, all right? And it comes in that little, you're going to catch it, sorry, clockwise, like that. Now go in there and catch it in that little C-clamp. Okay, if you're looking at it from this way, it's spooling off counterclockwise. If you're looking at it from the other way, it is clockwise. So now we're going to thread those rabbit ears, both of them. And if you don't thread the rabbit ears, it's not going to sew. Because the needle comes down between those rabbit ears. That little hook comes down there and catches the thread and pulls it up for the very first stitch. Now once it takes that first stitch, it's out of the rabbit ears. So it'll only be in one of the rabbit ears. So when you take the bobbin out you, and you look at it and go, oh, it's only in one, that's, you know, how did it manage to do that? Well, that's because it took that first stitch. But in order to take the first stitch, it has to be in those rabbit ears. Okay. So you will look into this machine on the side and you'll notice that there's a little cutout place in the very bottom of where the bobbin fits in. I call that the bunny's burrow. You put his ears there. So he is going head first into his burrow, ears down, tail up. Got that? All right. Now, we don't want to smash his tail flat when we're putting it in. We want it to stay up. That little brush runs around the race inside, and it has two purposes. It sweeps the thread toward the hook, and that helps the hook to catch the thread every time. Before, um, we had a lot of skip stitches with some of our sassy ones because we didn't have this little brush on our bobbin. So they added that, and that helps with that. And the other thing it does is if there's any lint in there, it's going to sweep it out too. So, And I also, I should tell you that I have a video for the care and keeping of your sassy girl, and I'll show you what you can do to keep her healthy. Now, the, um, And also tell you what you shouldn't do to it too. So, so you might want to listen to that. Okay, now when I put it in, I'm going to turn my bobbin so that it is slightly, um, that, that little top knot, the bunny's tail, is turned toward me slightly this way, okay? So that when you'll notice as you're putting it in that there's a little silver ledge and that that little tail fits underneath that ledge. So you don't want to just smash it into the ledge, getting it in place. You want to put it behind it and then... Turn your bobbin, and that clicks it in place and seats that little fuzzy tail up inside the little brush, okay? So that will keep your tail standing upright, being fluffy, cheerful like a bunny, busy like a bunny. Okay, now this is when you touch your flywheel. I'm going to crank it once, twice, until the thread has cleared the 
floor there. You can see it's coming out the hole. And what I like to do is gently pull in a little bit and to make sure it pulls easily. If I can't pull it, if it's stuck, then I will close the door, ring his doorbell, wait for him to turn on his light, and start again. All right? As long as I can pull it, then I know I'm good. So then I will keep a little tension on this. Uh, sorry. Keep a little tension on this. Crank my flywheel again once. There. You see that big foot come out with that little toe? Can you see that? All right. You can see it now, can't you? No. See his toe? Oh, yeah. You remember that? You remember I told you that these machines have personalities? They also have a little man living inside this machine. So <laughs> he sticks his foot out there and catches the thread on his big toe, or it's not threaded. So if you don't see that, then the machine isn't threaded. So that's easy to know. So you've got two things to remember about threading your bobbin. Make sure you get it in both the rabbit ears, going from the back to the front, not the other way around. The back of the bobbin is where you put the bobbin in to its case. Back to the front. And then when you crank that again, you make sure Mr. Sassy sticks his foot out there and catches the thread on his big toe. Now, don't lose your tension. Hang on to it while you close your door and catch it in that thread cutter guide. Now, if you were in the middle of a project, for instance, you had gotten to a stopping place and you wanted to change the color of your thread, you ran out of thread, you broke your thread or whatever, and you needed to have enough of a tail to finish that off in the back by putting it into the eye of a needle and taking a couple little stitches like you would on the back of a quilt, don't cut it off. Just leave that tail hanging there. If you cut it off, that's fine too. You can just pull it and cut it. But it's a catcher as well as a cutter, just so you know. All right, y'all can see that? Okay, so our stitch length varies greatly. But I'm going to show you flip stitch cording. So I'm starting off with a stitch length of two because I have a skinny little cord here and a space of two because skinny cords don't need that much of a curve when we're flip stitching them. If you get a long space, then your curve flattens out with skinny cords. Okay, I'm going to double tap the needle up down button and that is engaging my specialty stitch feature and that light is flashing. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. Slide this under here. On the side here, this little knob on the side is what controls the height of this. Can you see that foot? Watch that foot. See it go down and see it come up? Okay, so I'm only going to need it to come up a little bit because this cord's skinny. Stitch and a space. Flip, stitch, space. Flip, stitch, space. Flip, stitch, space. Remember what I said about some good music? Actually, you can't do this on your regular sewing machine. No, because your sewing machine is not going to stop for you for that flip. Right. And exactly. Now, remember, as you're sewing along, whether you're quilting or whatever, that thread... Um, might be caught really good in your catcher and your fabric might start to buckle or go collywampus on you, just put your hand under there and swipe it out after you've got a few stitches in place. You need to always begin sewing on the fabric and stop sewing on the fabric. So don't stitch into air. Sassy doesn't like that at all. Okay, when I get to the last stitch and I want to stop, I'll put my yarn in place where it needs to be and then I'll press the needle up down button it will take its final stitch. And now I can raise the presser foot, bring my fabric straight to the back and then over to the side and catch it and cut it in my thread cutter clipper. And look at that. Isn't that pretty cool looking? All right, that's single. Now let's do double. I'm going to start with the length of cord and I'm going to start sewing in the middle. So I have half on my left and half on my right, and I'm just going to cross them in front. Now in this one, I might decide that I want a little bit of bigger space, because the space is what controls that loop. The thicker yarn you have, the longer space you're going to need, and the longer stitch you're going to need. So when you're working on a project, when you get everything together and you get started, you might want to do some experimenting 
and write down the stitch lengths and space settings that suit it best. I always think, oh, I'm going to remember it, <laughs> and then I don't. Yes, you can change it. Your first stitch might not be what you think it's going to be because the stitch length is actually regulated by the presser feet. I'm, I mean by the feed dogs. So um, it helps to not have the feed dogs have anything on them when you're doing that. But that first stitch is not usually important. So. Yes. Yes. Isn't that pretty? Can you see that? Fancy, huh? Yes, ma'am. Have you talked about having a video that shows how it's threaded? Is that on your website? <laughs> it sure is. Also, the, same, the techniques that I'm showing you here, they are also on my website. All right, now let me blow your minds a little bit. Let's do double dutch flip stitching. This is fun. But this is one of those when I don't listen to music while I'm doing it. See what I'm doing? I've got two chords. I know. What? Okay. And then I bring the first chord up and over my underneath chord, stitch space. And the back two chords up and over, stitch space. The back cords up and over, stitch space. When you're doing flip stitching, here's something that you definitely want to know. Don't stretch your cord. Don't pull it tight. You want to kiss and hug the needle. You don't want to slap it. So you kiss and hug that needle with your cord, but you don't stretch the cord against it. You just want the cord to stitch over it. If you find that you're stitching into your cord, then you just need a longer stitch length. One more, and then we'll call that quits. I'm very rather addicted to these little things. I find myself just wanting to keep on doing it. All right, let's look at this. Well, you can't really see the colors in that. But you all can come look at that later. Now then, would you like to see me make a rose? Okay, I'm starting off with a piece of a very firm cutaway and a, a length of bias cut silk chiffon. My stitch length and my space length is on two, and I'll engage the speci specialty stitch feature. Having trouble talking. Now, notice what I'm doing with my fingers, I'm cranking my stabilizer around in a spiral and I'm putting my fabric I'm just keeping it as close as I can to the other yes you can do this with cotton you can do this with just about any fabric the only reason why chiffon is nice is because it's um, so lightweight but cotton works just as well voile works beautiful cotton voile and there's a lot of designers have come out with some really cool cotton boils. The hardest part is to keeping the flower that you have already created from getting underneath the foot. But if you do stitch in it, you can get your scissors and clip that stitch out. Not, don't clip the stitch, just clip the fabric. And then that's like, you know, a little bug has eaten a bit of that flower. It'll be quite all right. Okay, I think I'm done with this one. Ta-da! Isn't that cool? So you have a little flower.
So you can sew that directly onto something, or if you want to keep going and make a big one and you, at the back of it, and just cut away the stabilizer that you don't need and glue a piece of, of felt cutting the leaf shape to the behind of it, and then you'd have a pretty little something to put there. Cool, huh? Okay, now if we were going to quilt on something, for instance, let's follow the contour of this little birdie here. Isn't he cute? Okay, so I'm quilting. So that means my presser foot needs to not press down quite as hard as what it would on a flat piece. So I'm going to change that lever up there to, say, four. And when I lower my presser foot, I'm going to want to be able to swivel. So I want to begin with the needle in the down position because this allows me to swivel, see? Now, it only allows me to swivel because I also have the presser foot height at a higher number. If I had it on zero, I can't move. But because I have this set on two, I can move. Okay? So this is set on a four, three and a half to four no, for normal quilting, and two to three for if you're going to do swivel around it. I think I'm going to want a bigger stitch. Okay. Let's just say that when I'm quilting, there's not often any blessings going into my stitches. So when I get to the end or to a really tight curve, I can stop and take just one stitch at a time so I don't tangle anything up. Then when I get on a straight curve, up I go again. If I wanted to stop there, these threads on the back, I'd need to do something to them. So I would either put them in the eye of a needle and stitch them down, or I would make a knot, a, a, a knot right there and pull it flat. I usually make mine double and pull it flat like that. And then you can trim your thread tail. Simple, easy. All right, is there anything else you want me to show you on this machine before I move to the embellisher? Yes, ma'am. Um, it will take any, just about any batting. Um, some bamboo batting has too much resin in it to use. Some cotton battings have too much refuse in them to use. So uh, you just, you want a batting that is soft enough for that needle and latch wire to go into without catching on anything. Warm and natural works good. Quilter's dream works good. Yes, ma'am. What's the thread? Threads. Well, it likes polyester thread the best. Sorry. Is this not on? Okay. Oh, um, it likes 40 weight. Polyester thread. Serger thread works great. Um, yes. Well, I don't have, I don't carry threads, but I do have some places where you can go to find them. I noticed that there's some pretty threads out here that would work really nicely. Up at the, the register in that other, in the fabric room, those tall cones of thread, and I'm trying to remember what they were called, they would be perfect for Sassy Girl. And there's variegated ones. Yes, ma'am. I have a, a curtain bag to sell. Mm -hmm. What do you say? It doesn't stop like that? No. You can't. I have to trade that? I mean, uh, upgrade that one. Yes. Your dealer will send it back for you. You have to part with it for a little while. Right. But your dealer will send it back, and it goes back to the factory, and it gets a completely new bobbin unit in it oh, okay. and new guts. Yes, ma'am. Um, could you tell us how to um, make something Okay. Well, really, for, for that, just make sure you've got fabric under it. Okay? Don't do this. Don't put it in specialty mode without fabric because the needle will lower. Yeah. But just click, click. When that light starts flashing, then you know it's in specialty mode. If the light is not flashing, it's not in specialty mode. Click, click. Two tap. And then when you press it once, it'll bring it back out. Got that? Okay. All right, let me put the embellisher here. Specialty mode? The, the new machine has it already. All right, let's do some Sasha Goat, some embellisher work. 
Okay, y'all. This is a sweet little machine. And um, there are only really, the working parts are very simple. You have a, a, a foot lift up and down in the back. And then you have this crank here, which actually controls. Watch that. See that? See it goes up and down? All right. That's just so you can get thick stuff under there or thin stuff, whatever you need. That is it. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. I am working with a piece of cutaway uh, shear, cutaway stabilizer that's fusible on one side. And this is kind of helpful because, as you know, our needle felting with silk fabrics is not permanent until we make it so. So if you start with a fusible cutaway like this, shear fusible cutaway, then you can actually iron the back of it. And wherever those fibers have blended into the fusible part, that fusible stuff will help hold them in place until you get to your sewing machine to where you can do your stipple stitching. So if not, if you live in a climate that's very damp and you're working with wash away stabilizer, needle felt and silk fabrics, you need to go immediately from your embellisher to your sewing machine and do your stipple stitching to attach it because it will start relaxing on you before you get there. Just so you know. All right, let's try a pretty here. You are the feed dogs. This machine has no feed dogs either. So you are them. So you need to move your fabric because if you don't, uh-oh, look, it got a little tight there. I don't like that. What am I going to do? Oh, dear. I take it out, and I'm going to pull it out, and then I'm going to put it back down. This is truly fearless. You can't make a mistake. How cool is that? Well, you don't want the, it does have that good guide on it, which I take off because I have bifocals and that faux line in there messes me up because it glares on my, and everybody always laughs at me when I say that, but it's true. It does. It really does glare on me. No, it doesn't like super, it loves silk though. Okay. You should know not to pivot or twist when the needles are engaged. This movement, this movement is fine, but not this. Don't ever do that. All those little needles in there go all 12 of them and break off. Well, it depends. It depends. If your needle is bent to where it might actually damage the, the, the little holes that are... See, this clear plastic guide has a little hole for every single needle. So if your needle broke off down low and that little bent part is going to hit when you're, it's, they're all the way down engaged and it's going to hit it, then you might damage your machine, so you need to take that out. If it broke off way up high here, then you're pretty much good to keep going until you're done. But changing needles is not hard, and I'll show you that too when I get this done. Yes. Let's find a piece of velvet. Here we go. Let me show you what that looks like. Notice how I'm actually using my snips to, in I'm encouraging the fabric toward the needle. The needles are doing the biggest, their lion's share of gathering it up, but I'm encouraging the fabric toward the needles. You see that? Isn't that pretty? I'll put this in my lap. These are all silk fabrics, just different kinds. Now later you can come out. I have a whole bag of scraps and you can come out here. Well, we might just leave this machine right here. I don't know what she wants to do. And then you can try it. You can just try it out and see what you like. Well, it 
simply that you can embellish onto another piece of fabric, and that, that's really pretty, but um, I just like to create stuff from scratch. That's just me. No, you can do, do it right on, on fabric, and it's not a problem. Yes. Yes. Okay, let's take some fancies here. looking pretty okay you all want to see a rose okay watch this I'm going to pinch it between my thumb and my forefinger and I'm going to wind it tight against itself in a flat jelly roll and then when I get to the end I'll just fold that behind it let's find a good place that looks like a good place I'll raise my presser foot Slide this underneath, lower my presser foot, lower my needles once, twice to break it up, and then needle pelt it in place. How's that look? Can you see that little rosette? Isn't that cool? Yes. Pass it around. You see what I did? Now, if you, you turn it over and look at the back of it. Wherever you see fuzzy stuff coming through the stabilizer, you will need to have stippling in that area. Wherever you don't see fuzzy stuff, you don't need any stippling. And those areas will puff up. So it's pretty cool. All right, let me tell you about changing the needles in this. This is the easiest way to change the needles. You have a tool kit and you've got one skinny one and one fat one. The fat one takes this off. The skinny ones loosens the screws for each individual needle. Don't take the screws all the way out. Just loosen it so that you can get the needle out and a new needle back in. Right before taping for, actually for the Martha Pollan <laughs> PBS stuff that I did for her, um, I was in the back and you know you have to have 80,000 samples of everything done because there's no time to do anything. And one of the needles was broke. Well, I can't go on TV with a broke needle. In my <laughs> so I can't see anyway because it's dark back there. And I'm here trying to get this screw out, and it was too tight. So I finally got it out, lost it underneath the table, in the dark, behind the thing with five minutes to the set time. You want to talk about panic? I was panicked. Someone came to my rescue. They had a... a they had another set of screws. Okay, look. You see that round red screw right there? That is what attaches this to the bar. And you'll notice that right above it, there's a little red dot on the bar. Okay, that red screw and that red dot line up. So they must. If they don't, the needles aren't going to fit into the needle holes like they should. So, in order to change a needle, the easiest way to do it is to take this out. I'm going to raise my bar and I'm going to pull this out. Now I can easily change any of those needles that I want to change. Okay. Now when I go to put it back in, I am not going to worry about trying to line up all 12 needles with those 12 little holes. I am just going to lower my bar until I see that red dot and then I'm going to line this up and I know that I've got it going pretty much okay now I'll raise the bar back up now I'm going to keep my eye on the first three needles I can see those holes and then I drop this back into place lower my bar into the hole until I have lined that red dot on the bar up with my red screw and I tighten it and notice I'm doing all of that with my needles down in those holes that are in the foot so now I don't have to worry about those needles coming down in the spot they're not supposed to be. And that's as easy as it is to change the needles. Now I can raise my foot back up. Is it special needles? It is special needles. Yeah, but they're really, it's, they're really simple. This is a sweet, simple, awesome little machine. And she is a companion to your embroidery machines, to your soldiers, to your sassy girls, to your sewing. So y'all have fun today. Yes, I'm so glad. Thank you for listening to me. 
I appreciate your attention.